So hi, Women Grinds Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with Xana. And we're asking some questions to say about our new album, The Sex Was Good Until It Wasn't. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Thank you. Yeah, I'm super stoked. This response has been amazing. It's been picked up with a lot of love and a lot of passion, which I expect nothing less from my fans. They're very passionate, um, wonderful people. So yeah, I'm stoked. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. The, the album is sick. The responses seem good so far. I saw um, your your updated flyer for your tour go out yesterday with a bunch of sellouts on it. So that's fucking sick. Congrats on yeah, that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super stoked. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Album is incredible. First listen, clicked with it immediately. Fucking love it. <laughs> Amazing. I love to hear that. Thank you so much. Of course. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? Yeah, the uh, the title came from the song the sex was good um and i wrote that line the sex was good until it wasn't and i was like oh i that's like a really cool line i really liked it and then i just couldn't stop thinking about it for a few days and was thinking about the other songs that were in the album and the whole story that i was telling and i just felt like it was the perfect like umbrella statement to encapsulate the entire album as a whole so that's where that came from um and then the album artwork i knew I wanted to make that artwork for a few years. I had that vision in my head and I kind of described that as like this dark fantasy Garden of Eden queer world. Um, And when we were creating the album, we kind of just for fun for our own brains, we put all the songs in chapters of season. So fall, winter, spring, summer. And then I kind of like recreated that with the artwork as well. Like the one corner looks like more wintry it's like blue and frosty the other one's a bit like more orange and warm but for fall and then like spring and summer kind of come up the middle and up into the the sky so yeah that's fucking awesome (laughs) (laughs) thank you thank you oh i guess there's also yeah there's actually quite a lot in there there's like a double-headed lamb that i have in there and then i'm also holding this like bloody pomegranate that's like dripping down my arm uh and that i wanted that to be just like a symbol of like disrupted innocence being held in in two hands and like like revenge and anger and sadness but then also trying to be like gentle and nurturing and holding space for something like innocent and precious even though it might not be quite the same as it once was so that's the majority of the the artwork oh Oh my god Um, yeah yeah Yeah, there's a lot of putting putting like the songs into seasons i'm curious like where that idea came from I honestly, I don't even know. I think um, with my first album, I kind of had the songs in chapters of The Lover, The Brat, and The Fool. And so then when I, when we were working on this album, it just kind of like fell into place. I just, I had a whiteboard, like, like a madman. I had like my like crazy whiteboard with all of my, my maps and everything and drawing all the connections. And, and we just, at some point ended up putting them into seasons and it was kind of a fun creative uh, experiment for us too to be like okay like this one's going to be spring and like why is it spring and how can we make it feel and sound like spring and etc also the themes of the album of kind of those experiences i went through um over the last like 10 years and i feel like there's just so many seasons of a person when you're processing uh maybe some not so great situations that you've been through um and kind of dying and then the rebirth and coming coming back to yourself so it just suited the whole it all fell into place gotcha okay so you go into the writing process for each song already assigning like i need this season this season this season this season and then just moving from there it's not kind of like a sorting once everything's done it's kind of like in the midst of it like i i I wouldn't be like, oh, I need a spring song now. So I'm going to write a spring song, but like, I'll start writing a song and I'll be like, okay, this is feeling like it's going over here. And then like, how can we build on that? But okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also, it's always different every time too. There are some songs where I was like, you could be every season and now I just have to throw you somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, So can you tell us a little bit about, a little bit about your writing process for the album? Yeah. Um, I officially started the writing process about two years ago, um, even though I knew I wanted to write this album for a handful of years. So it was kind of always in the back burner of my brain. Um, But about a month or a few weeks after my first album dropped, we uh, held up in my cabin at my parents' house and had our first like official session for the second album. And my parents, we like 
my dad always did construction my whole life. So on our property, we just have a bunch of like junk everywhere and like tools and machines and stuff. So we went around and just started like dropping chains and banging on stuff and opening metal drawers and like recording all of these like crazy industrial sounds, um, kind of creating like a sample pack for the album so we could sprinkle that throughout the whole thing. Um, that was something I really wanted to do from the get go. Uh, as far as writing, like lyrically, um, I tend to just write kind of like alone in my bedroom. Um, and then I'll bring the song to my producers and I'll be like, okay, I want it to sound like this and I ha it has to feel this way and like this is what it's about and then we kind of bring it to life from there and every song is different sometimes we start them in the studio we start with music first or, or production first and then um, it like cracks open a different door for me and something falls out but um, but yeah. And I hope that answered your question. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it did. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So what song off this album took longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? Um, I think Feral is kind of funny because it's it's kind of the first and the last song that I wrote. Um, it was it was one of the very first ones from the that first session. Um but I just never felt like it was quite right. And I kept making little tweaks to it. And it was probably like the last thing that I like finalized, finalized before the album was done. So that one, technically, I guess you could say it took two years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you're just like making all these little tweaks and adjustments along the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then my my favorite one on the album. Yeah. Oh, that, I, this, this question is so terrible, but... Um, <laughs> It's so hard to choose and it probably changes every day, but I do really love Lip Service, which is the opener of the album. I love that song so much. And I, when I was writing it, I didn't kind of realize what it was going to be. And then when we started recording it, I was like, oh, this is like the opener. Mm -hmm. um, and I just I just think that's a beautiful classic song and I, I love it. Oh, yeah. Good pick. Right. Me too. Uh, so how'd the track list for your album come about? Did you write the opener be the opener, close be a closure, shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? Yeah. Um, when I wrote lip service, um, I knew that that was going to be the opener. I didn't really, f I, there was a world in which earth eyes was going to be the opener. But then once I wrote lip service, I said, Nope, that's the one that's the opener right there. And then same thing with January. When I wrote January, I was like, that is just like a banger of a closer for an album. Um, I kind of like to go out on like a grandiose note. Um, so that just made sense. And then, the rest of the songs, it kind of depended on story and and what pieces of the story I wanted to give the listener as they listened. Also flow, like what what went into each other well. And, you know, my, my music is very emotional and very dramatic and there's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs and you can easily be hit with whiplash if you just have my discography on shuffle. Yeah. So I was like trying, I know there's whiplash in this album, but I was trying to like soften the flow as much as I could. It's kind of hard sometimes. Lavender into Feral, I got a lot of people being like, why would you do that? And I was like, what else was I supposed to do? You know what you signed up for listening to my music. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is what you love about me. I know it. Don't lie to me. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, so would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you were creating this record? Um, ironically, I stopped going to therapy kind of shortly after um, I made this album and I kind of joke, you know, leading up to it and stuff. I was like, yeah, I, I took a break from therapy when I was going uh, writing all of these songs and you guys will thank me for it one day. And then I'm I'm going back in July, yeah. but um, <laughs> yeah. okay. my headspace, I think I was just kind of processing a lot of things that maybe I hadn't when I was younger. Um, and, you know, 15, if you've listened to it, it's a bit of a heavy song. Uh, and I knew that, like, I wasn't able to kind of process those things when I was younger. And I, I just knew I didn't have the tools. And I kind of I just was like, you know what, one day when I'm older, when I'm when I'm better, I'll, I'll work on this, and I'll figure it out. And writing 15 was part of that process. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, you know, only able to dive into those topics and say what I said and do it the way that I was able to because I had worked through it and I had gotten a lot better. So I think that, you know, you might listen to the album and like assume that I was like, 
absolutely distraught and losing my mind while I was making it, but I was surprisingly level-headed. Um, it, well, when it came to those things, the the breakup side of things, I was all nearly in psychosis. But you know, shit happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the yin and the yang. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's the balance, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. But I was. This is the first album that I made when I was a, f- a full time artist. So this was like completely. I was locked in. This is the only thing that I was really working on. And that was really a special experience to be able to like devote all of my time and energy into it. Um, and we honestly just had so much fun and it was very therapeutic and it was very rewarding. And I'm crazy proud of this album. Crazy okay. proud. So. Awesome. As yeah. it should be. And tackling something like 15 and releasing it, do you have any anxiety kind of talking about heavier things that before you weren't able to kind of speak about now that you are at the point where you can? Um, not really to strangers or the internet. That's so chill. That's so fine. My mm. parents, mm, bro, mm. that one, that one's hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, the, you know, some people in like my real life um, talking about these things with is just a bit more yucky feeling. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's totally normal and fine um but like with my listeners online with you know people that i just met on a 15 call minutes ago yeah, yeah. totally fine yeah. and that's, that's easy peasy um yeah but I, I also that's just that's part of it too and, and that's part of songwriting and i kind of just um it's my job is to just word vomit into the world and then let it live there yeah yeah and yeah. so kind of on the topic of uh outsider perspective and criticism or anything like that are you the type of person to read the comments and does any of that get to you or do you just kind of read it and say okay fuck you it's it's not for you then (laughs) um it's actually so funny because i've probably only gotten like three hate comments in my entire career like that's a win (laughs) it's at the point where i'm like okay well I'll know I made it once people start hating on me. Like, where where are they at? I don't know. So I do read the comments. I read all the comments because uh, everybody's very lovely. Sometimes there's some funny ones um, and where I'm like, I know you didn't mean that maliciously. However, that's an insane thing to say right now. But um, it doesn't really get to me. I And for the most part, everybody's like so lovely and so passionate and excited about, um, you know, what I'm what I'm doing in the music. And they it's really fun to see. Um, their takeaways from everything and how they interpret different lyrics or stories and um so i tend to have quite a bit of fun lurking on twitter quietly (laughs) yeah i I was scrolling through your instagram i'm like this comment section's lovely like ours isn't even that fucking nice like we get ripped apart (laughs) i know what is that i'm like you guys are too nice to me i'm like i dropped a song called monster like dragging myself through the dirt and they're all like as you should queen like we loved it and i'm like no like you're sub- what do you mean <laughs> like i just gave you a silver platter to hang on- hate on and you showed me so much compassion what the you fuck? heard it here oh first she wants hate give it to her <laughs> <laughs> okay wait no actually do be really nice to me i am fragile and i might cry if you're too mean there you go. <laughs> this is a situation everybody's happy right now let's keep these good vibes going <laughs> it's all good it's all good <laughs> um so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time should you do in the car with friends and dark with headphones on is a workout album party album what do you personally recommend um this is a really great question i think that listening to an album for the first time with your friends is always like so much fun if you guys like make a little night of it and you get cozy and you kind of like go track by track um i typically you know if taylor swift drops an album i'll listen to it with it with a couple of my friends like we got our little system um but typically if there's an album that i that i'm really excited to listen to that drops i like i put the colorful lamp on maybe light a candle i get my coziest blanket yep. headphones and i just like cocoon and like experience and that's like my favorite way to experience an album for the first time um and i think that'd be a dope way to experience this album however don't forget the tissues um second time get in the car okay. get in the car crank that stereo have a lot of fun with it so yeah i don't think you can go very wrong okay hell yeah Perfection. all right <laughs> so this one should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words no more no less 
wait oh my god oh my god this is so much pressure okay trauma mm -hmm. um passion mm -hmm. and does self-love count as one word or two Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, we could hyphenate. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. there you go. Perfect. There you go. Trauma, passion, and self love. There, I, I'm, that's what I'm going to give it today. Okay, <laughs> love that's it. good. Right. Um, so, in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album? Um, I, I think because I, I kind of write music with the intention of putting like every ounce of emotion. and passion into it and i i kind of always want my listeners to be able to feel that as as best as they can um with this album i really want them to just hold space for themselves to feel their emotions and like feel the the yucky dark things that you kind of have to feel and and go through to move through and really move on from and like know that that is it's such a a good experience to have and it and it, it will be so self-serving in the end um and also knowing that like you won't live like that forever and you will still have so much joy and light and beautiful experiences regardless of the yucky things that may have happened um i think that as dark as this album gets there's like so much joy in it like forever and alibi and like these songs like my the love story of this album is like for my best friends and like I just want everybody to know that like shit can happen and it's going to suck and but you're going to get through it and it's going to be magic and rainbows at the end so to not lose sight of that. Oh yeah, I love that. Beautiful. Wonderful. <laughs> so are you able to talk about any particularly challenging or stand out moments from the creation of this album, positive or negative? I think I really we worked really hard on making this album like the best that we possibly could and there were definitely some moments where it took a bit longer to have a breakthrough i know uh you know in the production side of things the kicker kind of was the kicker of this album for us for a minute we were just like oh are we gonna take her out or is she taking us out we don't know yeah. um you know so there's there's some things like that but eventually you know you keep chipping at it eventually that it all falls into place and things start making sense and stuff but um yeah i can't think of like one specific like crazy moment it's it's just like a bunch of little moments i mean there was there was one time when i was tracking all the vocals it was like the weeks that we were tracking the vocals and i was uh working on these songs about someone that i was in no contact with and like hadn't seen for months hadn't spoken to for months we were blocked on everything and then i i ran into them uh one day and it was terrible Oof. and threw my drink at them it was it was oh. drama it was madness it was mayhem and the next day i had to go and record a, like record vocals for a song about them when i still like felt very soft and kindly towards them mm -hmm. um, and i uh threw up a few times that day just because the emotions were so so crazy but you yeah. know what that's part of it and i think that it shines through and i think you could almost hear me vomiting in the back rooms if you listen close enough so yeah, it's buried in there it's, it's layered it's buried in there it's a layer it's yeah. a layer yeah. <laughs> um since you're leaving for tour in a couple of days we have to ask what's your go-to snack when you're at a gas station or a rest stop oh i okay do you guys know i think they're just called twists it's like that blue bag of like popcorn it's like these fluffy popcorn twists do you I know think i've what? seen them Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen them. A lot of people don't like them, but I, it's just like salty goodness that just like salty popcorn goodness that melts in your mouth. Um, that, that's one of my go-tos. Um, and then candy wise, like a sour soother or like I, sour key people. Some people call them sour keys. I've never heard of that. About? No. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to need to send you a picture. After. I'm sure you have. I think that everybody has like a different name for them, but it's just like this sour candy that you get it. gas stations and i love them <laughs> all right <laughs> hell yeah my go-to in fall hell yeah and on the topic of food if your music project was a dish what dish would it be and why um this album i think it would just be like a massive bowl of fruit like a big fruit salad we got pomegranates we got cantaloupe we've got even lemons strawberries grapes i don't know if you saw my 
music video for Better Kind of Best Friend, but we had like so much fruit and we were just like devouring into the fruit and into each other. And I feel like that just tainted my entire view in a good way of this album where I'm like, this album is just fruit and women. So yeah, yeah. that's good. All <laughs> right. Cool. Hell yeah. um, and for the last couple of questions, going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? I, I, oh my God. Oh my gosh. I'm going to say my Baba's Borscht would be my death row meal, um, mm -hmm. which she passed a long time ago. So I don't actually get to have that anymore. My mom still, my mom still makes it and she makes it like super, super, super good. But if it was death row, I would say bring Baba back from the dead, mm -hmm. make me the Borscht. Yeah. Um, and then drink. Probably just like an, lots of iced ginger ale. Honestly, can't, yeah. can't go wrong with a good old ginger ale. Yeah. Insane combo is the two, but it would be, it would be perfect for me. It, it's that comfort <laughs> food. That's what you need. Yeah, it's that comfort food. Yeah. Exactly. Hell, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Oh, that's a really good question. I'm, um, I'm like a huge like fantasy novel girly um and i would just want to live anywhere that has like actual real magic i just want like magic and creatures and fairies and witches anywhere like i'm not picky about where it is but anywhere with all of that that's where i want to be absolutely perfect, perfect. all right yeah and i thought of asking the last question every single person who's spoken to have said that it is the most important question what's your favorite color green specific Ooh. shade of green um i like like a nice like sage foresty green mm -hmm. nothing too like bright too crazy um i did have very bright crazy green hair for a long time so for hair that was great but everything else like a nature foresty green is where it's at all right hell yeah um so as i said that's all the questions have today is there anything that you'd like to plug I leave tomorrow for tour. Mm -hmm. Come, like, if you're in the States, the entire month of Pride, I'm just going crazy. We're just going to be so gay together for an entire month. So come <laughs> hang out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in Canada, I'm going on tour in September. So come to that. And yeah, I don't know. Listen to my album. Don't gay keep me. Tell me I'm pretty. I don't know. Anything like that it will work for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Snow. This has been Nixana, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.